Welcome to video number six for Control-Shift-Enter, Mastering Excel Array Formulas. Hey, I'm in the workbook Array Formula DVD book dot start on the sheet topics. Now I have a little uh, pasted item here just to remind you, if you're watching this DVD trying to learn Array Formulas, you should be taking notes because here's what we've done in the first five videos. We saw how to make a math array operation, then we saw how to do a comparative array operation, a join array operation and a function argument array operation. We've also seen three types of arrays, ranges, defined names, and even arrays created by formula elements. Now I'm just going to delete this right here. In this video number six, we got to talk about our fourth uh, type of an array we can have in a formula, array constants. So I'm going to click on this number 6, and that jumps us from our topic sheet to our sheet number 6. Now, to help illustrate, we have a few examples for array constants. But to start off, our formula goal for this example here is to add the three lowest golf scores, excluding extra values if there's a tie for third. Now, actually, we already saw how to use an array constant back in video one using the large function. But here, we want to add the three smallest scores for golf. Well, we can use the small function. And actually, before doing the small function, let's look at this because we could. there's always multiple ways to do things. We certainly could do this, right? Just take the small and give the k argument a 1. And what does small do? It obeys you. Whatever k you put there, it'll go get it. The first smallest, the second smallest, the third smallest, all in the k argument. That says, which small do you want? And then we could copy it over. But that takes a long time to type out. So here, instead of putting a single value into the k argument, we can put an array of values and do a function argument array calculation. All right, I'm going to come right here and do small. I'm going to, for the array, highlight this, comma, and the k. Now, I want to show you two ways to do that. The first way is <coughs> if you happen to have the values in the cell for some reason and you wanted to put them this way, I'm going to hit the F4 key, you could do that. There's a k. It's an argument. It's expecting a single value. We're going to give it more than one value. So the small function, of course, will give us three answers. There's one, two, three formula inputs into that k argument. So the small will obey and deliver three answers. When I hit the F9, you can see, sure enough, there it is, 84, 84, and 85. Now, again, if we enter this into a single cell, those three values can't simultaneously be put into a cell. So we simply add. Now I'm going to use the sum function here. And I want to uh, compare and contrast. Here in the small k, we put cell references. If you do that, you have to use Control-Shift-Enter. If you hit just Control Enter, it displays just one value. If you do Control Shift Enter, it will uh, the small the sum function can add. Now, of course, you could also do sum product as we saw last video. The sum product has an argument array which can handle that uh, array calculation. So Control Enter and drag it over. Now, I'm actually going to undo that Control Z, Z, and leave it as small and Control Shift Enter because I want to compare and contrast cell references put into the k argument. I'm going to drag this over. Notice it only adds the one of the 70s, not both of them. Now, I'm going to just cheat. I'm going to copy this in edit mode and put this in edit mode in Control V. And now, instead of using cell references, we can use an array constant. An array constant, we saw this back in video number one. Curly brackets always house the array constant. And any values that Excel can handle, text, numbers, true, false, any kind of data that Excel can handle can be put into an array constant. So I'm going to put 1, 2, 3. Now, curly brackets always house the array. Commas mean column. That means this value 1, if we want to tell the array constant that these are in columns, you separate them by commas. And I always remember that by 
column starts with a C and comma starts with a C. One, two, three. That means as you move from the first number to the second number, it's going to a new column. If you use semicolons, it means row. We'll talk more about that later when we look at a larger example. But there you go. Now, the beauty of an array constant is, well, first off, you're hard coding the values in there. So if they were ever to change, you would want to put numbers in the cell and use the either Control Shift Enter with sum or probably some product. But the if they're not going to change, you really always want the, the lowest three values hard coded in because it doesn't require Control Shift Enter. So one beautiful thing about array constants is when you put this array of values into the any argument, right? It is an array function argument calculation, but it doesn't require Control Shift Enter. Control Enter. No curly brackets up there, right? And drag it over. So that's a big benefit for array constants. Now, let's in this example, we know that the 270s are not included, just one of them. If, in fact, you had to add the bottom three or the top three, and you definitely wanted any ties for third, we can use a different method. I'm going to scroll down here. There's lots of notes detailed calculating notes about how that array formula is calculated. All right, so here's our formula. Beautiful. It excludes a tie. But here's what you do if you wanted to include any tie for third. You, now, earlier I used some ifs, and I tend to use those all the time, but I might as well show you how the sum if works and use it in a formula. Now, notice sum ifs we saw last video, range argument and sum range. They're in a different order for both of these functions. And the criteria range says only range. All right, so I'm just going to remember that and say, well, here's the criteria for adding, comma, the criteria. Well, I can say less than or equal to the third smallest. And that way, because we're using less than or equal to, it will know to add. So I'm going to use small. Highlight this range here, comma, just a 3 in the K. Now, that'll give me the actual value, so I need to join to it in double quotes, our comparative operator, less than or equal to in double quotes, and join it with the ampersand. Absolutely awesome. All right, Control Enter, and then drag it over. Now I can clearly see I got both 70s. So both these formulas are great formulas, but obviously achieve different results. You want to not include a tie, use this one. Include the tie, use that one. All right, now let's go look at another example for array constants. Now sometimes you're, you have these, this subgroup, and you want an or criteria check. You want a true in the cell anytime this name here is equal to any one of these three names. Now, we can use the OR function. And I'm going to say, is this equal to and highlight 1, 2, 3, all three of the cells. Now, this is an array calculation, right? There's our definition of uh, an array calculation. More than one value, some operation. Now, I'm going to make sure to lock this, because I'm going to copy it down. Now watch this, Control, Shift, and Enter. That requires Control, Shift, Enter, because the OR function is not programmed to handle array calculations, and that's an array operation. So Control, Shift, Enter, and then double click and send it down. You can clearly see we get our truths. Now if these values didn't change, we could use our uh, knowledge of array constants. And here's a great trick. You know, typing this out, notice th these are unlike the last array constant we just did, 1, 2, 3. Those were across the columns. These are across the rows. And it would take me a while to type this out, but here's a great trick. Put it, if they're already in the cells, highlight the range and hit the F9 key. Now, we've seen the F9 key a lot in this DVD to see how to evaluate formula elements, but here we're using it to create an array constant. Absolutely beautiful. Notice that text gets put in double quotes, and there's our semicolon. That means down across the rows. Now, for both this example and the prior example, it wouldn't matter if you used comma 
or semicolon because these are one-way arrays. And just a little while, our next example, we'll see a two-way array where it really does matter. Now, what's the beauty of this? Control, Enter, double click and send it down. Absolutely does not require Control, Shift, Enter. When I uh, look up here, I do not see those curly brackets. Now, this OR is actually somewhat of an in inefficient formula. Sometimes people like it because it is more clear. This is asking a question. Is this cell equal to any one of those? And so sometimes people uh, use this type of formula. And I've, in fact, used it because for exactly that reason. However, for a large data set, this would not be the formula to use. You would pro you'd want to use the match function. So match. Match, as we've seen in our earlier videos, looks up an item and tells you whether what the relative position of the item in the list. So if I say, hey, match, look up this within this range right here, F4. And I'm going to have to comma 0 because these I don't think these names are sorted here. It'll deliver a number if it finds it in the list, and an NA if it's not in the list. So I'm, And this is no array calculation. This is just Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. Now, an A and a number, the number is what we not want. So if you want a true, you use is number. This is um, a, a much better formula in the long run than that or. Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. Now, of course, I'm going to copy this. And if you wanted to delete this, and this was something you always checked and the data didn't change, Control-V, you could simply do your same little trick, F9. Hard code those values right into the formula. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, so now none of these have curly brackets because uh, only this first OR formula is an array formula, but we used an array constant, so it doesn't require Control Shift Enter. All right, now let's go look at a great example. This is not technically array and array formula because we're not going to have an array operation, but we're going to see a great use for array constants. Now, I want to do VLOOKUP. Here's a bunch of uh, boomerangs, and I need to look up the price, first column, second column. So I'm simply going to use equals VLOOKUP. Look up that, comma, within this table, F4, comma, the second column has the value I want to return, and those values are, n uh, they are sorted. So I'm going to leave that out, Control Z. Remember, the rule is if you can sort the first column, and use approximate match, it is a lot faster calculating. For small data sets, it doesn't uh, particularly matter. But it is a good habit to get into. Good habit to get into. All right, so those are sorted, so that's working fine. Now, what if I was not allowed, I'm going to use Alt-E-A-A, -A, not allowed to have that in the cell. Well, no problem. I could hard code this into my formula. Remember, the rule of thumb, the golden rule in Excel is if data can change, put it in the cells and refer to it with cell references. But if it's not going to change and you don't want it in the cells, boom, we can hit the F9 key and convert this to an array constant. Now, here's where the columns and rows really matter because VLOOKUP depends on the lookup data being matched in the first column. So here it is. And we have uh, an example of text and numbers in an array constant. So curly brackets house the array. Text is in double quotes. There's a comma, which means go over to the next column, and then a semicolon, which means go down to the next row. So this is the array syntax for this data setup. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Again, this is not an array calculation because this isn't uh, an array. We aren't doing an array calculation. This is just an array constant sitting in the table array argument if you look at. Why would we do this? Because we don't want the data over here, right? So now if we Alt EAA, this one, of course, doesn't work, but that one does. Control Z. Now, one last cool thing. You could actually, if you didn't want it in the formula like that, or you didn't want it in the cells. I just copied that. Actually, here's a great trick. You, you got your data. You're like, I don't want it in the cells. I just want to create a defined name. You just click anywhere, type equals, highlight the range, F9. Now I'm going to Control-C, 
and Escape. Now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control F3. Control F3, create a new name. And I'm going to call this um, Video 6 um, Array So something like that. Video 6 array constant V table. And then down here in refers to highlight. And I always hit delete because sometimes I get tricky stuff there. Equal sign and control V. Sometimes when you click down here it, and you move your arrow keys, it gets you into trouble. So I always delete it before I paste whatever I'm putting there. Refers to, I click OK. And there we have it. So now I'm going to close this and come down here and use a define name. I'm looking up that value and uh, V, and I can see it down here. I'm going to double click that dog tag, comma, to, and it is sorted. Control Enter, double click and send it down. All right, so we saw a little bit about array constants. And the cool thing for array formulas is that array constants uh, don't require control shift enter. Now, I do have some examples in my notes here. All of these ones are examples of array formulas where the array constant doesn't require control shift enter. But here you can see here's one. If you tried to do this formula right here, because there's a range in it, that array calculation then is just because there's array constants here, it doesn't mean this is going to be entered without control shift enter. That formula requires control shift enter because why? There's a range in it. All right, uh, next video, video seven. I think we go on to array functions. All right, see you next video.